No. 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 We were promised an escape. Not to save you, Inferno. I shall not live my final days here in this blasted waste. Calm yourselves. Your panic is our greatest enemy. Come, we must build a line of defense. to us, Father. You must lead the people to safety. I can handle this prayer. You? shall tend to the refugees. Let us be about it. <laughs> As you wish, my little lord. Escape! Wait, that's... Euless and the army. So, you've recovered then? In time enough to be of aid, for once. We can speak of it more later. For now, we must fight! To repay your salvation in kind, or with better! For Garlemald has her pride! Of that I've no doubt. Saviors, the Imperial Army. Oh. I had hoped to take all of them down at once. Think a withdrawal might be in order? Ah, oh, sod that! You know who would never abandon these people to their fate? be devoured by their former friends. That'll be beyond cruel. These beasts must fall here and now. Well then, I'd say it's high time we threw caution to the winds. So long as you spare me the heroic sacrifices. Now, let's go!
not the barest trace of ether. Maybe there really is no way to bring them back. Thank you for saving our lives once again. I remember you, from Purusha. You helped us there too, didn't you? Ah, you're from Palaka Stand. I'm glad you're still in one piece. Or you will be, once I see to that injury of yours. Man's apocalypse ruin everything we've fought to achieve! Get it together, Alize. You're embarrassing yourself. And in front of Father, no less. You might never measure up to our champion. We ask too much of him as it is. You mustn't let Eorzea's hero fight alone. You must board without delay. The ship will depart ere long. Your offer to host us in Charlian is most appreciated. But will the final days not soon fall upon it as well? Your hesitation is not unwarranted. The satrap entrusted me with your lives, yet I have failed your comrades. Nor are you wrong to fear that this corruption will continue to spread. I cannot promise you complete safety, even in my homeland. What I can promise is that I will do all in my power to protect you. That power is not inconsiderable. Even now, my countrymen are preparing the vessel that will deliver us to a sanctuary on the moon. Join us on our journey there and beyond to new horizons. Come to old Charlian. 
please. We would be fools to refuse such a generous offer made in earnest. It seems to have a new destination. The people of Radzat Han have known too much suffering. The march to Garlemald will only bring them more, short though it may be. I quite agree. Fortunately, they have you to look after them. Yes. Well... Behind you! Just there! Xenos! Here! You'll be alright. Hurry to the airship. Why have you come? A heretofore unseen beast. Twas ripe for the slaying. Poor sport, alas. Unfit to temper my blade. Oh, for the love of... You cannot still be on about a rematch. That is and has ever been my sole concern. You, on the other hand, are fixated on a different quarry. Your passion pales before mine, yet neither hate nor despair seems sufficient to recapture your misdirected bloodlust. So, I hone my blade. And I wait. That's it. That's all you care about. Garlemald is in ruins. Our homeland, the nation you rule, is as good as gone. Along with so many of its people. Not just soldiers like us. Not only those who fought and killed for power and duty. Innocent civilians. Murdered by their own flesh and blood. Lost and confused as they breathed their last. While we who survived with our lives and minds intact were left to freeze to death. The Eorzeans tell me all this was your doing. You slaughtered your countrymen. You did. For what? For nothing in the end. So much wasted effort. You. For your own sake, Eulus, you must control your anger. It 
Master will serve no one should it consume you and see you transformed. <laughs> Would you be happier had I a good reason? What? If my motives met with your approval, would you no longer resent the outcome? If so, then perhaps a beast's skin would suit you better. Duty, honor, morality. All constructs of convenience when put to proof. Surely the war taught you how easily power becomes the tool of the self-righteous. How the people's justice was merely a means to their ends? Yet you would ask me why. Ask any creature of this star and those above for answers, and they will tell you what suits their fancy. And they would be right to do so. What meaning there is to be found in the petty vicissitudes of your existence must be gleaned by you and you alone. Should you seek it in battle in the fruitless pursuit of my demise, then come. Assume your rightful place as a notch on my blade. You are a blight on the Garlean race. And there would be no more satisfying way to expunge it than by beating you to death! But I will not be party to another tragedy. I refuse to lose anyone else because of you. So go. Go! And may we never suffer your madness again! You found meaning in living this way. I cannot deny you found strength. Yet if you only pursue your hedonistic pleasures and pay no heed to the plight of others, then no one will give you the time of day. You will never get what you want, not even the battle you pine for so dearly. You'll be alone for an eternity and you'll deserve every agonizing second of it. We're ready to depart. The refugee ships will be leaving shortly, but I've asked mine to remain for the time being. There's room enough for you to join me on it, if you wish. Do contain your surprise. I needn't agree with the Scion's methods or intentions to acknowledge that their deeds are deserving of gratitude. We appreciate the offer, but might I ask why you are delaying your departure? I presume it is not solely for our benefit. I must visit Garlemald 
ere we return to Charlian. Having caused such an uproar, it is only meet that I explain myself to the Ilzabad contingent. Allow us to accompany you then. We should be glad to facilitate, given our familiarity with all concerned. If you would like to join as well, Eulus, we can speak of recent events on the way. You'll be after your seat on the forum next. No major injuries then. Good. I briefed the recovered soldiers and sent them on their way as quickly as I could, but nevertheless feared they would not make it in time. The additional support was invaluable. Your men saved more than a few lives. Though not all, I regret to say. I take it that I am addressing Lucia Junius. I am the Forum's envoy, Forchano Leveilleur. And you are owed an explanation for these most dire developments. Another trial wrought by the final days. I was beginning to suspect as much. You doubtless feel some consternation having been forced to abandon your original plan. But trust me when I say you were right to send the refugees elsewhere. Beasts have been sighted within the capital. Perhaps it was a stroke of grim fortune that the population was decimated beforehand as they've yet to appear in any great number, but in time. In any case, Maxima leads the remainder of the contingent in an effort to cull the creatures and evacuate the populace as we speak. Once the airships are taken to the skies, I pray your men can be persuaded to join him. You'll permit us to retain our weapons? I wouldn't have sent you after the Scions were I expecting you to stab them in the back. And I, for one, would not consider past transgressions more relevant than future contributions. Regardless of the circumstances that saw us at odds before, we need men of courage now, more than ever. We swore to defend Garlemald, and so we shall. It seems you have everything under control. You will excuse me then, for mine own duties await. A moment, Master Fortuno. You did desire to express your appreciation for services rendered, did you not? I did. 
Though if you intend to again ask that Charlian alter its course, you will find my gratitude insufficient. Tis nothing so onerous. I wish to hear the details of this grand endeavor of yours. Do you swear to listen and to learn, and not to embark upon some scheme to impede us? I swear. that the Forum make you privy to our plans. You may await our summons at the Baldessian Annex, assuming the decision is in your favor. Does that suffice? It does. You have my thanks. Excellent. You can regale us with tales of your most recent sojourn to the first one. Did you hear something just now? even the darkest night, and to this bitter clime bring warmth and comfort. Tis heartening to see such an assembly upon my return. I thought often of you whilst I looked down upon our star's brilliance from the moon above. Yes, but what are you doing here? And dressed like that? Aren't you cold? Verily, I fear for my health should I proceed to expound upon our purpose ere I procure more suitable garments. Then allow me to summarize. We're here because none of you lot are up there. Nor has anyone deigned to send word about any changes in the plans. Rude is what it is. At least that's what I thought at first, but then folks got to wondering if you weren't in a spot of bother, so we decided to take matters into our own hands. Come down here and help, if our help be needed. So she says, but it's also something of a convenient excuse to visit a theorist. Uriange made it sound absolutely marvellous. More so before the impending doom, but still. It's not like there will ever be a better time. What with the aforementioned doom? Marvellous, they say, yet not an ounce of pudding to be found. I must suffer Uriange's inferior works no more. Hey, maybe consider the plight of present company before you go blathering on about pudding and doom? We are at your disposal. We were born from Hydaelyn's love for the lives of this star. 
So naturally, we would much prefer to see them continue. Twiddling our thumbs up on the moon is hardly conducive to that, though, is it? Aye, and not when you've all got such precious thoughts and feelings and hopes for the future deserving of more active preservation. Speaking to Oriange made us realise that while we've carried out our duties to the letter, we failed to fulfil them in spirit. From there, it was just a hop, skip and a jump towards resolving to do better. So please, show us how. Help us help you. Forgive me, but are they... Thy distant collaborators, indeed. Hey, old fellow, well met. You'd be a member of the forum, would you? It's an honour and a pleasure to meet you at last. I'm Living Way, Hydlin's right paw. That last bit is very important, as am I. If I may humbly say so, myself. I, uh, bid you welcome to our star, Living Way. On behalf of the Forum, I thank you for travelling such a distance to meet us. As you have surmised, preparations for the Exodus have not proceeded as smoothly as we had hoped. I should be happy to personally escort you to our headquarters in Charlian, where you may advise us as you deem fit. It was with reluctance that I set aside the great work of readying the moon for habitation. Be assured that I did so only after the Loperids made plain their earnest desire to come hither, and I myself felt a growing certainty that their contributions here would prove invaluable. Tis trite, perhaps, but I followed my heart. esteemed philosopher of Eld. Nevertheless, tis my hope that what little knowledge I shared shall serve them well, and perchance help save us all. Will thou attend us at the forum and lend thine own wisdom? If that's all quite settled, can we start moving before Uriangé catches his death? Even I'm freezing out here. Oh, I dare say you'll warm up quickly once you're aboard the airship. Sat shoulder to shoulder with our fur-covered friends. There is a matter I wish to raise with you before we enter. We are here to listen and to learn. But if the Forum's plans are more or less what I expect, then I should like to make a proposal that will serve our ends. By your leave, of course. I don't see why not. Your words and wits have gotten us this far. Agreed. I will present our queries so that you may consider the most advantageous way to advance your proposal without distraction. Thank you, everyone. If I may have your attention, the ad hoc session will now commence. The purpose of today's assembly is to brief the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, at their request, on the Great Exodus. 
You may enter. On behalf of the Forum, I commend your heroic actions on the Magna Glacius. We shall not soon forget your service to us and the people of Ratzat Han. The Satrap, whom we have informed of the refugees' new arrangements, sings your praises as well. As an expression of our gratitude, we will endeavor to answer your questions as fully and openly as we are able. Let us begin. First, it is the Forum's objective to ferry the life and knowledge of this star to the moon. Am I correct? You are. It is for this purpose that Charlian has labored these many long years. We have collected biological samples and scientific records from across the star. When the time comes, they will be moved from their places in Labyrinthos and Numenon and conveyed to safety. Once that critical task has been accomplished, we will begin transporting the Charlian citizenry, which has been categorized into groups. The earliest arrivals are to ensure hospitable environs for those who come after. Following our people, we will send those of other nations in turn, beginning with our allies. Radzat Han was foremost among these, but since the final days have already come to Thavnir, we saw fit to include the refugees with earlier groupings. An ambitious plan. You have accounted for the safety of all nations and tribes, then? As many as we can. And how, pray tell, do you decide who to leave behind? To journey beyond the sky is an unprecedented and immeasurably difficult endeavor. Introducing sources of inevitable conflict would condemn all to certain death. Questions as to the validity of that approach aside, are your plans proceeding apace? We're under the impression that your primary means of celestial transportation is incomplete. If only in that it does not meet our optimal parameters, that is correct. This arc, as some have taken to calling it, is fully operational and could be launched even today. However, the final days have progressed more quickly than we anticipated. At present, the ship is incapable of attaining speeds sufficient to meet our evacuation targets. Should we put the vessel into service as it is now, we will be unable to travel to the moon and back quickly enough to complete the necessary number of trips. Precious lives and knowledge will be lost. Seven hells. Is there anything to be done? The ether burner, the primary means of propulsion once the craft is in the space between stars, is undergoing testing to determine whether it can be made more efficient. Though cargo is being loaded for the initial phase of the exodus, we are prepared to continue our experimentation up to the day before launch, should it prove necessary. What if the Scions were to solve your problem? We shall help devise a means to improve the ether burner's efficiency on two conditions. If we succeed, 
You must allow us to meet with Hydaelyn. It was simple enough to deduce. You have a Concord, and so you would never have abandoned the Anti Tower had you no other means of communication. One far more convenient, I suspect. The second condition, also to be met upon our success, is that we be permitted to propose another use for your Ark. We would be at liberty to refuse this proposal. Of course. If we cannot prove its merit to the 99 here, who are we to stake on it the lives of all peoples of this star? <laughs> Delightful as always, Master Alfino. <laughs> We couldn't have asked for a finer plan. Allow us to solve this complex engineering problem of which we were entirely unaware until moments ago. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> the satire writes itself. <laughs> Yet, what field has not benefited from a change in perspective? When we are at wit's end, what we need is not the same dry theories recited ad nauseam, but fresh inspiration. I, for one, have faith in my erstwhile students to provide it, and I find their terms to be perfectly acceptable. Order! Order! We have no time to waste on debate. I call a vote. All in favor of agreeing to the Scion's terms? Seventy-one in favor, twenty-eight against. The ayes have it. Fortuno, as the architect of this project, you are the best candidate to show them its current state. And bear in mind that regardless of your personal misgivings, this is the will of the Forum. Very well. I call this session to a close. Return to your tasks with urgency. The final days wait for none.